as students of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar International Research Center, University of Mumbai, this is our humble attempt of throwing light upon the great visionary Chhatrapati Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj with an intent to inspire millions of his path-breaking achievements. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj is often remembered as the senior king of equality, liberty and social justice. Early Life of Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj of Bhosle dynasty of Marathas was a king and the first Maharaj of the Indian princely state of Kolhapur. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj is also known as Rajashi Shahu Maharaj. He was a true democrat and social reformer. He was greatly influenced by the contributions of the great social reformer Mahatma Jyotiba Phule. In the pre-independence tradition, the ideal kingdom was subject to the Varna system. In other words, the Shudras and the Ati Shudras had to serve the Dvits and women were subservient to men. In contrast, the Bahujan Sraman tradition witnessed many kings who upheld justice and worked for public welfare in every sense. They devoted their lives to arduous task of dismantling the Varna and the caste system and the elaborate structure of discrimination based on it. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj was one of them. He concretized the dreams of Mahatma Jyotirav and Savitri Bhai Phule. Maharaj was born as Yashwant Rao in the Ghadgi Maratha family of Kagal village of Kolhapur district as Yashwant Rao Ghadge to Jaising Rao and Radha Bai on 26 June 1874. Young Yashwant Rao lost his mother when he was only three. His education was supervised by his father till he was 10 years old. In that year, on 17th March 1884, he was adopted by Queen Anandi Bai. widow of King Shivaji IV of the princely state of Kolhapur and the title of Chhatrapati was conferred on him. He completed his formal education at the Rajkumar College, Rajkot and took lessons of administrative affairs from Sir Stuart Fraser, a representative of Indian Civil Services. In June 1902, the Cambridge University conferred on him an honorary doctorate of law. He was the first Indian to receive the honor. He was honored with the title of Rajarshi at the 13th National Convention of the Akhil Bharatiya Kurmi Mahasabha held in Kanpur from 19 to 21st of April 1919. He was married to Lakshmi Bai Khanvilkar, daughter of a nobleman from Baroda in 1891. The couple had four children, two sons and two daughters. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj was also associated with many progressive policies. He worked for the cause of the lower caste subject in his state. Primary education to all regardless of caste and creed was one of his most significant priorities. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj was over 5 feet 9 inches in height and displayed a regal and majestic appearance encouraging the sports of wrestling wrestling was one of his favorite sports and he patronized the sport throughout his rule indeed at the mere age of 9 years he had defeated Maruti Rukdikar in a bout in Kagal a feat achieved for the first time by a person from a royal family in India. Even after becoming the administrator of Karvi, he had not neglected wrestling. On his return from a trip to Rome, he decided to modernize wrestling in India and began building a modernized wrestling ring in Khasbagh in the year 1907, which was finally complete in the year 1912. after strenuous and consistent efforts of nearly 6 years maharaj then began inviting renowned wrestlers from the world over and arranged bouts 
with them so as to enable Khazbag wrestlers to learn modern and improvised techniques of wrestling. Maharaj did not ever discriminate between wrestlers on ground of religion, region, caste, language or community and wrestlers from all walks of life were welcomed with open arms at Khazbag. Some of his famed wrestlers were Devappa Dhangar, Shreyappa Behrad, Kaka Punjabi, Vyankappa Varud, Kamraduddin and many more such gyms. Maharaj paid personal attention to their diet and daily training. Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj was well aware of the fact that sportsmanship promoted unity and physical well-being. Hence, he was a connoisseur of the wrestling sport. The Royal Huntsman Chhatrapati Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj was a skilled huntsman. Twice a month, he used to go on hunting expeditions. When the then British collector came to know of this, he also used to accompany him. Maharaj used to hunt only those tigers, black bucks and such other animals that had become a threat to human life and civilization. A bison he had hunted in his times has been preserved by the taxidermy as a symbol of his eminent hunting skills. In those days, in Northeast and South India, Indian cheetahs were reared. In fact, only for hunting black box, these wild cats were humanized for the purpose of rearing such cheetahs. Maharaj too established an institution in Kolhapur and the place had around 35 cheetahs in those days. Some of his beloved cheetahs were named Viramati, Lakshmi, Ganpya, Star, Bhavani Shankar among others. The Connoisseur of Valor How much he valued bravery and valor is evident from the following instance. During the First World War, Indian soldiers of Maratha Light Infantry had laid siege to the city of Kut al Amara in Iraq, on the banks of the river Tigris. However, their rations were exhausted and due to paucity of supply, they were forced to consume raw meat of their dead horses. When Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj came to know of their sad plight, he sent them a letter instructing them to consume the meat from the bags and also granted them the permission to deal with any situation in any manner they deemed fit. He also assured them that he would stand by them come what may. Inspired by the gallant words of the king, the soldiers fought with a renewed vigour and gave a taste of their bravery to the hapless enemy. Unfortunately, they ran out of all provisions shortly, lost the battle and were forced to surrender themselves. When Maharaj was informed of their defeat, he lamented their loss, but also praised them for their valour. Coronation and his efficient administration Maharaj was anointed the King of Kolhapur on 2nd July 1894. During his accession, Yashwantra was renamed as Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj. His statementship skills were put to test within three years of coronation. In the year 1897, the deadly bubonic plague was rapidly spreading throughout the cities of Mumbai and Pune, killing hundreds. Moreover, these cities were also reeling under severe drought conditions. Although himself a deeply religious devotee, Rajar Shishahu Maharaj, understood that in the face of plague and drought, it would be beneficial to subject to ban all religious gatherings. Accordingly, disregarding all customs and traditions, Maharaj issued a farman banning the Sri Jyotiba Yatra, an important religious occasion of the patron deity of Kolhapur, Dev Jyotiba. On 26 July 1902, Shahu Chhatrapati 
issued a historic document in the Gazette of Karveer in Kolhapur state. It was a notification in English that reserved 50% of government post for backward class candidates. The 1902 notification says, His Highness is pleased to direct that from the date of this order, 50% of the vacancies that may occur shall be fixed by the recruits from among the backward classes. In all offices in which the proportion of officers of the backward classes is at present less than 50% in the next appointment shall be given to a member of those classes. Article 46 of the Constitution reads, The state shall promote with special care the education and economic interests of the weaker sections of the people and in particular of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and shall protect them from all social injustice and all forms of social exploitation. The Saviour of Terranized On 26 July 1902, he took a path-breaking step, something no one had even imagined. Amid stiff opposition from the society, he implemented 50% reservations for Dalit and the backwards in the educational institutions and in government jobs in his state. This was the first instance of caste-based reservation in India. That is why Chhatrapati Shah Maharaj is often described as the father of modern-day reservations. Later. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar incorporated the pioneering initiative of Shah Maharaj in the Indian constitution. The constitution mandated reservations for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, but the decision on OBC caste was kept open. The OBCs got reservation on 16th November 1992. About 45 years after independence and 90 years after Chhatrapati Shah Maharaj made the provision for his subjects. The Thirst Quencher The second milestone came on 26 January 1950, when India chose to be governed by the constitution and when a great reformer, emancipator, legal genius like Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar gave constitutional sanctity to the spirit of the 1902 notification. The extent of vision of Chhatrapati Shah Maharaj as a father figure is evident from this instance of his life. Covering about 11,000 hectares of wooded hills and standing tall at 140 feet, the Radhanagri Dam constructed across the Bhogwati River is an engineering marvel per se. The dam was envisioned by Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj as a permanent solution to the perennial problem of drinking water scarcity within the municipal limits of Kolhapur. The construction of the dam began on 18 February 1907 under the watchful eyes of Maharaj. Till date, the Radhanagri Dam is used for providing portable drinking water to the inhabitants of Kolhapur for irrigation as well as for generating hydroelectricity. It is a one-of-a-kind dam in India whose all seven gates are neither electrically or manually managed but are controlled mechanically of their own accord. The dam and its beneficiaries over the past many generations stand as a testimony to the administrative efficiency and statemanship of Rajashi Shah Maharaj. The Abolisher of Slavery Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj was in complete agreement with what Mahatma Jyotiba Phule wrote in his Gulam Giri. Without education, wisdom was lost. Without wisdom, morals were lost. Without morals, development was lost. Without development, wealth was lost. Without wealth, the Shudras were ruined. So much has happened through lack of education. The Sympathizer of Women By as early as 1912, he had made primary education compulsory and by 25th July 1917, he had made it free. 
he was the first indian ruler to do so like the phule couple he laid great stress on women's education and women's right we all know about dr baba saheb ambedkar's hindu code bill but few of us are aware that chhatrapati shahu maharaj also passed a hindu code bill on 11th of november 1920 which stated that women has equal rights in ancestral property he opened schools in all villages each to serve a population of at least 500 and up to 1000 in 1920 he established a free hostel named prince shivaji maratha free boarding house the champion of non brahmins on 9 july 1917 Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj issued a declaration that the income and the assets of religious institution in Kolhapur belong to the government. A great revolution brought by Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj that non-Brahmins could perform puja. He also ordered that Marathas be appointed priests in temples. In 1920, he established a school to train priests in conducting religious rituals. He outlawed two obnoxious traditions thus bringing about a sea change in the positions of dalits in the society first in 1917 he abrogated the archaic baluddari system under which an untouchable was given a small piece of land and in return he and his family had to render all kinds of services to the entire village without any compensation second In 1918 he promulgated a law putting an end to the oppressive vatandari system and introduced a land reforms to enable mahars to become owners of the land this ended the economic slavery of mahars to a great extent Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj graced Karnataka non brahmin social council this event was attended by social activists from Hubli Dharwad some other parts of Karnataka and Maharashtra the paternal figure of the tormented rajarshi shahu maharaj was the parent figure in the lives of his subjects is proved from this unprecedented incident in the history of indian loyalty in the year 1919 rajarshi shahu maharaj took the historic step of banning untouchability in all public places and social gatherings However, his subjects were in no mood to change their regressive mindset. Once in the Bauda bungalow of Kolhapur, post lunch, the upper caste Maratha men moved towards the community water tank to drink water from and found Gangaram Kamre, an untouchable, was touching the tank. Enraged Santram, a Maratha, and several other Maratha men blamed him for polluting their water tank. and mercilessly flogged gangaram till his back started bleeding profusely maharaj was in delhi at the time and upon his return gangaram along with several other untouchables met him showed the injuries on his back and narrated the incident maharaj was so incensed he called upon the perpetrators immediately whipped their backs with a horse whip until they bled and thus punished them in the presence of gangaram and others maharaj also freed gangaram of his menial job and allowed all untouchables to set up businesses of their own choice and assured all support for the same accordingly gangaram started the satya sudharak hotel on bhausingji road kolhapur to encourage people from all castes to dine in at the hotel maharaj himself used to often arrive there in his chariot along with an entourage of brahmins marathas and other upper caste men and insisted to have tea with him there to relieve the society of the bane of untouchability maharaj adopted a two pronged approach one was by formulating laws and other was blasting the myth of untouchability by his own conduct in public On the way of social transformation in Maharashtra this incident pertaining to Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj and Gangaram Kamre has become etched as a historic episode 
Chhatrapati Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj took a series of steps to ensure that untouchables were treated on a par with others and to improve their living conditions. Until 1919, no untouchable could get treatment in a hospital. In 1919, Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj issued a declaration that any untouchable could visit a hospital and get treatment. In the same year, he issued another order outlawing the discrimination in primary and high schools, also in colleges, against students on the basis of caste. Besides, ensuring that the Dalit got a foothold in government services, he also issued an order that said. Dalit government employees should be treated with dignity and respect and that government offices should be free of the practice of untouchability the officers who are unwilling to follow this order should resign within 6 months the order said on 19th november 1921 chhatrapati shahu maharaj met the british prince of wales and fought the sorrows of indians before his highness maharaj also led the foundation stone of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj's memorial in pune the ceremony was attended by esteemed members of the prestigious non brahmin society the maharaja was greatly impressed by the great intellect of young bhim rao and his revolutionary ideas regarding untouchability chhatrapati shahu maharaj believed that dr baba saheb ambedkar was the leader who would work for the amelioration of the segregated segments of the society he not only showered praises on dr ambedkar but also helped him to complete his education abroad he even donated rupees 2500 to dr ambedkar to start his newspaper mukanayak on 31st january 1921 First and twenty-second March, nineteen twenty, a meet was organized in Mangao. It went down in history as the prestigious Mangao Council that witnessed the commingling of the two most prominent champions of the downtrodden in India, Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj and Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar. While enlightening the audience, Maharaj had rightly predicted. that dr ambedkar would be our leader in the future and that since it is the people who have discovered him he would be a leader of the masses maharaj expressed confidence in him saying that dr ambedkar won't rest until he has successfully improved the lives of all indeed maharaj had also prophesied that one day dr ambedkar would lead the entire nation strong shoulders as we celebrate 131st year of his jayanti in 2022 seeing the satcher of dr ambedkar not only in india but also in the whole wide world we could hear maharaj's word about him echoing in the distance achievements galore chhatrapati rajarshi shahu maharaj became the ruler of kolhapur when he was just 20 and ruled the state for 28 years establishment and foundations made by chhatrapati rajarshi shahu maharaj are as follows established his first foundation on 2nd july 1894 promulgated new wing of ferguson college on 28th march 1895 for the purpose of providing free and compulsory education to the poor and needy founded the victoria maratha boarding and digambar dream boarding in kolhapur in 1901 founded the veer shaiva lingayat hostel and muslim boarding in kolhapur in 1906 established miss clark hostel and devetna shikshan samaj boarding in kolhapur in 1908 established shrimati saraswati bai gsbb hostel indian christians hostel on 11 september 1970 maharaj successfully implemented the free and compulsory education scheme for the downtrodden on 27th december 1970 
महाराज प्रिसाइडेड ओवर द अखिल भारतीय मराठी परिषद फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ मराठी लैंग्वेज ऑन फोर्थ मार्च 1918 महाराज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड कंपलसरी एजुकेशन इन चिखली टाउन एस्टैब्लिश्ड श्री शिवाजी महाराज सोसाइटी इन पुणे आर्य समाज कुलगुरु एंड वैश्य समाज बोर्डिंग इन 1918 presided over the Arya Dharma Parishad on 14th December 1918 established Shri Shahu Chhatrapati boarding in Nashik and boarding for Dhor and Samhar community in Kolhapur in 1919 presided over the Akhil Bharatiya Kurmi Kshetriya Samajik Parishad in 1919 founded and established Shri Shivaji Vaidyakiya Vaidyak Vidyalay and hostel along with Prince Shivaji Maratha boarding in Kolhapur in 1920 Chhatrapati Raja Shri Shahu Maharaj was a great patron of art and culture encouraging music and the fine arts he supported writers and researchers in their endeavors installed gymnasiums and wrestling pitches and highlighted the importance of health and consciousness among the youth the seminal contribution in social political educational agricultural and cultural spheres earned him the title of rajarshi the government of india hails shah maharaj as a social revolutionary of india he was a true democrat a visionary and the prince of the masses in india chhatrapati shahu maharaj was a multifaceted personality who thought and acted far ahead of his times and his values were honored as the founding principles of our constitution the great emancipator of the backwards and dalits unfortunately breathed his last on 6th may 1922 newly aged 48 the lamp which he had lit during his lifetime oiled by the ideologies of mahatma jyotiba phule and dr baba saheb ambedkar still burns supreme and is illuminating the darkest corners of the nation even today <laughs>